Hi everybody, Erin here again today, and today we are gonna make little canvas bean bags. So I made one, and now I'm gonna show you how I put this all together. I am starting with a 12 by 12 sheet of uh, burlap, and this will actually make four bean bags total, but we're only gonna need three. So you're gonna have a strip left over for a future project. So I'm gonna do the bean bags in three different colors. Um, I've got my yellow, and I have red, and then I have the blue. And part of the reason why I'm doing three colors is because I have three kids, and we're gonna fight over who has what bean bag. They'll probably fight over the colors anyway, but at least now everybody can hold their set of three and not have to wait their turn. So, solve that problem. All right, because this is a 12 by 12 sheet, it makes life really easy. I'm cutting them in strips just to make life super simple, in strips of four inches. So each bean bag is a four by four size bean bag. I'm using a 12 inch ruler and just eyeballing it and kind of going up right where the four inch mark would be from the edge. And this would give me a four inch strip. And I just move it up and continue cutting. And again, I am just, these don't have to be perfect. They just need to be pretty darn close. We are gonna need two full strips because from each strip you're gonna get three squares and three and three give you enough. <laughs> So this is just one little extra piece. If you wanted to go ahead and make a fourth bean bag, that's fine. I really personally think three is enough. That's kind of the standard for the game. Now we need to cut these into four inch sections. So same thing, take my ruler along the 12 inch side and just cut them into four inch squares. And then I'm just gonna pair them up. Sorry, I have a little tangling thing. I'm just gonna pair them up, and I am gonna keep same color to same color. So one kid's gonna be blue, one kid is gonna be red, and one kid's gonna be yellow. Um, just so I keep my pairs, I'm going to alternate the colors here so I don't lose track. There we go. So there's what I have. So next step, I'm gonna show you one, and I'm gonna speed through the rest. Actually, I'm just gonna get through the rest on my own. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and run a bead of Fabri-Tac around the almost the entire perimeter. Not all of it, but almost the entire. And this is just a good beacon glue that ends up blending all kinds of stuff, especially fabrics. And we're dealing with burlap, so. I know I could have done this in canvas or any other kind of material, but I really wanted to go for a rustic look on this, which is also why I'm using the sisal rope from Canvas Core. And these came from Canvas Core as well. So just a fine little bead of glue. Make sure, you know what, I'll leave that as my open end because it doesn't want to tuck down. And just run along the edge. And then stop. Oh, no, stop here. You want to leave a section open where you can fill it in. And then just make sure you close this up. If it's not a perfect match, like notice this top square is a little bit sore, that's, it, that's fine, no big deal. The glue is going to bond it together. And this is for a backyard game, so if it gets wet, I don't care. If it gets, you know, bubbles on it, I don't care. If somebody gets mud on it, I'll just hose it down, I don't care. Um, it's an outside thing, so really don't care how I want if they get battered and bruised. So because they're getting thrown a lot, they might get wet, they might get rained on because somebody left it in the backyard. I really want to reinforce it with a sizzle. So I just found a little plastic uh, needle. I don't even know where it probably came from a kid's craft of some kind. And I just ran it through to one end. And you know, I've got about I don't know, half a yard here, enough so that you're not gonna shortchange yourself. I'm gonna find the corner. So I think this is our first corner. I'm gonna start it at a corner, pull it through. And it's gonna leave kind of a big gap and that's fine. And it might be a little sticky because you just put the glue down. That's what you're kind of wanting is the glue and the sisal rope to kind of bind together. And then tie yourself a little knot on the end. And leave yourself a tail because what I did at the very, very end is when I came all the way through, I tied the knot at the very end. So leave a little tail and don't cut it off. that through then we're going to take a little bit of our glue to make sure that this doesn't wiggle around and we're going to glue here and we're going to glue our knot so it doesn't come undone 
just kind of gluing it all. And then glue this end. There we go. And again, don't be too worried about being super perfect with your glue. This is an outside game. See, it's, look, it's already starting to fray. It's an outside game and it's gonna get kind of gross. Now, careful where you made, so here's my opening right here. It means I need to go on this side and start running. Now, this top piece is a little bit shorter than the bottom, so that's the side I'm gonna have facing me while I run my whip stitch going all the way around. I wanna try and push it through the area I just put glue on because I want it to kind of stick to, see it's gonna be a little bit tough, but that's okay, pull it through. There we go. And it's gonna give that nice good reinforce. So there we go, just kind of pull it through and then just start running it around. And it can be nice fat stitches, that's fine. It doesn't have to be super skinny. All right, so at the very end, make sure that you kind of pull it all out so it keeps its square shape and it doesn't buckle up because you pulled it, you don't want it to stay buckled like this. You want to have a nice flat stitching. So just kind of pull it back out again. The glue's still uh, not 100% dry, it's still working on drying, so it'll kind of bond to the stitching that you just pushed through here. So, I know traditionally bean bags, obviously you put beans in them. Well, I'm of the, logic that I like to use what I have on our hand. And I have a ton of these little pea gravel, these little rocks that I don't know what to do with. They were part of a landscaping that we switched around and we have all this pea gravel. So we saved it in a little spot in the backyard and we've been using it for various projects. So instead of going out and buying beans and possibly have them sprouting or, you know, just getting gross in here or whatever, I'm gonna use rocks because I don't care if the rocks get wet, they'll dry. You know, if they get kind of gross, I can hose them off. I'm not worried about them deteriorating and getting disgusting in here. So that's what we're using. I just kind of washed them off real fast just to get any of the dirt off of them. And so they might still be a tad bit wet. You know, I've been having them in the sun drying. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open this up and pour them in. This looks a little, like I can't, I can just barely close it. So that's probably about the right amount. I might take a tad bit out. It doesn't take that much. I mean, this wasn't even full and I haven't used it. You need to have a little bit of room so they can kind of wiggle around in there and that's fine. What I'm gonna do now is take my glue again, make sure these don't fall out. And I'm going to just glue along the edge here, just like we did before, but I'm just finishing it out to close it up. Seal it with my fingers. Really get in and just seal this edge here, right here. Close my glue so it doesn't dry out. <laughs> and then just finish stitching the rest of the way. And as I go in and stitch, I wanna make sure that my stitch ends on this end so I can tie the, the tails together. So I need to go up. and then back up again and it'll work out just perfect. So the half yard that I had, it, it was plenty. I still have tons left. About this much. And just tie it off. Super simple. Now from here, I'm gonna re-glue this to really make sure this stays firm and doesn't come undone and come unraveled. So I'm just gonna kind of re-attach some glue to all this. And it'll firm up and get nice and hard and stay nice and intact. Now I'm gonna cut my little tails off. And there we go. Now this particular length, this is way too short for any to go around the entire length. Ooh, I made that a little tight, that's okay, it'll be fine. But this rope is way too short, so I'll just save this in my stash of things to use in the future. I don't keep scraps like this, I don't bother. So, here's your finished little bean bag. It still sounds like a bean bag, but it's little rocks. Again, I'm a firm believer in using things you have on hand and not wasting. 
So thanks for stopping by. I'll have some pictures of the finished product. Don't forget to look at the other video of how I made the other part of the cornhole, cornhole game, the base, how I painted that up and what my husband did to create that. So thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.